Peter Schiff, in a recent interview, talked about the current stock market bubble and why it's bigger and more dangerous than the one that popped in 2008, causing an economic crisis. The bubble building up in the stock market today is more significant than the 2008 bubble. But the sources are the same. It is artificial low interest rates and QE. The Fed is responsible for the rise in the stock market. The Fed is printing money that is going right into the stock market. In 2019 the corporate earning actually declined slightly, yet the stock market was up like 30%, Peter Schiff noted. If we really had a good economy, you would have expected the corporate earnings to reflect that. The Fed is doing today more QE than any time before. This is QE extra says Peter Schiff. This is the result of a 40-year bull bond and the stock market as interest rates have fallen from 18% to near zero, wild printing, and over the past decade, QE. Since 1982, stocks are up 3,500% while real GDP is up 150%. Buffer index, which is the total stock market value to GDP, was 0.28 in 1982. Today it is 1.6. The historical average market to GDP is 0.6. If we were at a historical average market to GDP, GDP would have to be 60 trillion. This market is not the result of production. It's the result of 40 years of easy money. Did you know that Microsoft and Apple combined make up nearly 40% of the Dow index value? And that Apple and Microsoft contributed the most to the market's big year? Apple and Microsoft, which surged 85% and 54% this year, respectively, are the two biggest contributors to the S&P 500's gains this year. What's amazing is that even though we have a great economy according to the stock market and certain politicians, the United States ran a nearly $1 trillion deficit in 2019. This is with unrelenting QE and other market stimulants in effect. Where do we go when the markets inevitably take a turn for the worse? If the economy is great, shouldn't the deficit be getting smaller? All of these factors together should make you think. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. After every boom, there is a bust. It has always happened in the past and always will in the future. When times are good to make plans for the bad days, when things are bad, hunker down and enjoy finding deals on things that were out of your price range a couple of years ago. Get ready while you still can. Only greedy idiots and unaccountable fund managers are buying the markets now. They will all get crushed when the epic collapse happens. It's different this time. There was never QE and not QE QE repo before. It's also based on cheap and fake money and debt. I really believe that banks are front-running corporate buybacks. Corporate buybacks will be less effective, the higher the market goes. Eventually, like every other bubble, it will pop. Who knows when, but it will. I can't wait to see what fraud they come up with to start it all over again after the next bust. The crash of 2008 was the direct result of Barney Frank's Community Reinvestment Act, which forced banks and brokers to make home loans to people unlikely to be able to pay them back, in the name of racial equality. Period. And since that law is still in place, it's going to happen again. Schiff and the Austrians have been right all along. And they will continue to be right as well. And there's plenty of people with a bearish mindset that has done extremely well in this market on the way up. I know, I'm one of them. It is possible to stack silver and own Goog. What is right is right. What Schiff has said is right. If a person knows Austrian economics, you would agree with Schiff and realize that no one can predict the when. These folks are correct, but the problem is that they didn't strike the fear in the general public, dumb as usual, but the Fed. This is why they are doing repo operations, cutting interest, and now QE4. They are so scared of the inevitable because they know there's no cure. And that's a historic effort that no one in human history has ever done before. You can laugh at the folks sounding the alarm one after another, but you can't deny the fact that the end is near. What choice does the Fed has anyway but to blow bubbles? Allow the markets to find their true value with the Dow at 9,750? The cities would burn, millions would be unemployed, houses, boats, SUVs all repossessed. The communists would take over. No way can they allow that, so there is no way back now. Get used to 100% Fed intervention, 100% of the time. Rates will be kept near zero or below, and debt levels will continue to skyrocket to keep the party going. One day it will collapse, but bears will have been long gone when that day comes. 
The money changers love it. Greed rules the land. The stock market is the overwhelmingly most important thing in the world for the 10% who own 85% of all stock outstanding. The 100 or so richest people in the world actually are your real government. Americans are busy believing otherwise and promoting their own poverty. When plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men living in a society, they create for themselves, in the course of time, a legal system that authorizes it and a moral code that glorifies it. Frederick Bastiat. Everything is a bubble. The bankers make money inflating them and make even more trading when they pop them. In lieu of trying to play a rigged Wall Street casino, I'll stick with poker for now. There is a surplus of stupid and too many gamblers at the tables, the dealers can pump and manipulate the markets and the debt to infinity really. Like modern day gold miners on worthless land. They'll still dig, and dig, and dig. Feeding the markets, hoping and praying they'll strike gold. They are handing out counterfeit money, handing it out to their billionaire mates who are buying real assets with free money printed from nothing, but we the people will pay the tab. Money printed out of nothing is counterfeit. But the dumbed down people are going look at the stock market, not realizing that they are paying for the rich to get richer. Then when the dollar crashes, the rich will have assets, and the people will have debt. The people don't realize that this is the grand finale where they get buried once and for all. No more middle class, just the rich and the poor. Total power. The reckless behavior of the central banks means that there are going to be massive defaults and probably the destruction of the dollar and unprecedented geopolitical instability. We all assumed they would back off before it got to this, but sadly, we were wrong. We are now well past the event horizon, and all eventualities from here on are bad. Everything from a dollar crisis to World War III is now on the cards as well as a likely global depression. It's going to be ugly, and I hope it ends soon before it gets any worse. While the world is distracted by immigration and impeachment theatrix, the true criminals are quietly organizing a global currency collapse so they can put us under an electronic currency that will fully manifest by the midst of the tribulation. Ten years of QE created a financial system that depends on the Fed monetizing debt in massive quantities forever, so that billionaires could swap dollars to skim profits from QE forever. Unsaid, but likely, is that since both the ECB and BOJ are deep into endless QE, then the Fed needs to get in step. Coincidentally, there's an FOMC meeting in play just in time to save the world from the financial crash these billionaires will cause if they don't get free money under their terms. Banks have oodles of US Treasury's debt that needs to go at a profit, and the Fed is the only buyer dumb enough to buy it, so the banks earn a profit. Implied terror as we need QE forever now with zero interest rates for good measure. Repos are too unpopular, and we will make faces and stick our tongues out at Powell if he makes US use repos instead. We will hate him forever. And we'll cause the biggest financial crash the world has ever seen if we can. It's coming. There is no way the Fed can raise rates without putting us into a recession or more than likely depression. Print that money. It's really sad that people can't see the writing on the wall. The Fed is Soviet-style central planning. Remember how fast the Soviet Union collapsed? Central banking guarantees such a fate. This entire banking system has to collapse. The Fed is doing everything possible to keep it going. Working miracles. Nobody here seems to have a clue, the Fed has pumped in 1 trillion since September in the repo market. Ray Charles can see that this show cannot last 2.4 quadrillion in derivatives over the counter interest rate swaps. As Warren Buffett said, derivatives are weapons of financial destruction. The thing is, systemic risk is too high. It has to, and will collapse no doubt. America could go to war to get out of the debt. When will it come? Nobody knows, next week, next month, next year. But it is coming. This is financial voodoo, hedge funds needing a bailout, and posing a threat due to their voodoo, derivatives, the bankers controlled Fed mopping up the mess, and more financial voodoo. All of this activity that benefits banks ruin our markets, currency, and economy. Bankers chicanery that benefits the chosenites but creates chaos, fuckery for us deplorable. 
I was merely a working tax donkey with no conception or understanding of the above until the Great Recession when I learned that the Federal Reserve, our own government created with computer keystrokes $16 trillion to parcel out to US companies, corporations, banks and also foreign banks to bail them out and keep them afloat due to their chicanery, corruption, and irresponsibility that led to the Great Recession. Not one banker or financial firm, bank, or corporate entity was investigated or indicted. It was all swept under the rug. Tax donkeys such as myself were never enlightened as to what happened. And did not or would not have received any similar such beneficence from our bankers controlled government system. It looks like these entities were involved in the same chicanery since the Great Recession and will be bailed out again. The real demand for US treasuries is shrinking, Russia is out completely, China is borrowing against their US treasuries, South Korea has enough, so the Fed is mopping those up as well. By April or May next year, the insolvency of this model will become apparent to the elite, along with the fact they have drained the US to the dregs. The one thing that the Fed cannot directly do is create demand. That lack of demand is why there are cracks showing in the otherwise Disney-esque facade. Best Buy even closing a few stores, more and more layoffs, etc. The printing is covering a lot of sins, but it is going to catch up, whether they can carry it past the election is what's going to be interesting. Inflation will destroy the US dollar. This is a fact. Due to inflation, 100 US dollars in the year 2000 would only buy you $82 worth of groceries in 2013. While $100 in gold in 2000 would buy you $470 in groceries in 2013. How much do you think that the same $100 US would be worth in groceries today, 2020, and what about gold? How much in groceries would you buy today 2020 with the same gold? Gold makes a great hedge against inflation. Housing prices too high. People got too greedy. People are drowning in the economy, and they're looking for a lifeline, the people who aren't struggling are blind to the situation and are unaware that their continuous gains are pushing the lower classes to bankruptcy. Perfect storm the debt-driven consumer consumption is what fuels the economic bubble that is and has been the US economy. The economy is total shit right now. Only political spin BS believed by electorate morons says otherwise. Gold is becoming more valuable in any case. The smart money is looking at monetary issues and the resulting economic growth or shrinkage that may potentially come about. Stocks? What are stocks if you can't buy food and energy and shelter with stocks? Stocks are a debt bubble reservoir, not money. Gold is the quicker picker upper, and is money. At some point in the future, regardless of who wins, gold will explode. And that will be because of the enormous pile of debt and deficit that can no longer be financed. That'll be the straw. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.